Hey guys, uh, Annie here. This is my first face video on this channel. And I just wanted to make a art haul video because if you're watching this, it's probably because I posted this on Facebook or Tumblr or something. I'm just really excited to like show you guys this art supplies because it's like, it's really unusual for me to buy like art supplies or at least a large amount of art supplies that isn't like specifically for a school project or something just because art supplies is really expensive. And uh, for Black Friday, should I have gotten the colored pencils and all the other stuff? Maybe not, but I did it anyway. So uh, first up, we have a mix of colored pencils. I ended up getting these. Uh, I went in because I was like, oh, I'm going to get like a Prismacolor like colorless blender because I got a Soho color pencil set because I was required to get colored pencils for a class. Ironically, never touched them for said class. <laughs> but they were on clearance for $10 at Jerry's Artorama anyway, so you know, it's not like it was a huge loss. It was $10, and they're actually uh, pretty nice. They're um, supposedly artist grade, but they're, honestly, they act more like student grade, because uh, I'm gonna show you guys now. So I got one Soho urban artist pencil to like fill out my collection just because they didn't have a Prismacolor in a similar color. So it's like if you look at it when it lays down, actually there's a much better way to do this. So if you look at it, it like lays down pretty well, but it's like these, so you know, it's nice. But if you, it's like this was my first time actually using Prismacolors because it for some reason, they're actually cheaper at Jerry's when they're on sale compared to the Soho Urban Artist, even though, like, Soho is, like, I don't think they're as good, honestly, but granted, this is my first time with Prismas, but it's, like, if you look at it, like, it's, like, it's, it lays down very differently. It lays down much softer. Um, as far as I can tell, the Soho Urban Artists are wax-based, but I haven't been able to find anything online confirming that. It's just people guessing. Prismacolor definitely is wax-based and I haven't actually done a piece using these browns yet because the 36 set I have has like maybe like two browns which is why I got these. Overall I like these much better. Oh yeah here's a, a brown Soho that I got for comparison. It's Burnt Sienna. Like there, you know, it's like the, it's very pigmented, it lays down very nicely, but it's not nearly as soft and doesn't blend as well. Uh, so we'll see how these like work being mixed in with the Soho's in like different pieces. But I think I might be converting to Prismacolor or Polychromos because like it is so much smoother. Next up, I think I might have already shown this up. Colorless Blender! Uh, the Soho set doesn't come with any sort of blender, and I really like the look of blended color pencil pieces, and you can technically get that look with, like, going over it with white, but since one of the things about the Soho's is since they don't blend as well, it's like they're not as soft, so they really don't blend as well. You have to apply a lot more pressure than with the Prismacolor, at least based off of the Prismacolors that I've used to really get like blending. So it's like, if you can see from this piece, uh, this was from Inktober. My, am I shamelessly plugging my Penumbra fan art? Yes, yes I am. Go listen to the Penumbra podcast. Uh, if you look, it's like, this was the photo I took after I finished the piece and I did blend it off with like the white colored pencil, but it really didn't do that much. Cause like, it's not waxy enough to really make it blend. So it's like, you know, it helped, but it didn't really do a lot. And then I got this baby. Oh, and I also got this baby, also for blending. Or for, you know, putting on top if like, I want a white that like, is more opaque. So I did it, and here's the photo of what happened after I did it. I was kind of hoping it wouldn't completely destroy it, and like, and it didn't. Overall, it looks much better. I like it much better blended out. I feel like the colorless blender is like much waxier than the actual pencils, which says a lot about the Soho pencils. So overall, I like, it's like overall blended much better, although since I 
was really tired when I was doing this piece. There's like random specks of black that ended up there in Juno's skin. I'm just like, oops. And it's not like I was going to do much with this piece anyway, except cry over how close to canon this actually ended up being. I'm still kind of surprised that like it got that close. So next up, more Prismacolor. Call the race! So I've been eyeing these for a really long time. Usually for sketches I use just a mechanical pencil because it's there. And like there's not a lot of pressure with a mechanical pencil, you know? If you mess up, you break it, you know, it's a mechanical pencil, you know? It's like for whatever reason like HB pencils with an eraser, like actual artist pencils usually give me this pressure of oh no I'm using like actual art supplies I paid money for, I have to actually be good. I haven't really felt this pressure with these and I think it's because like they're not meant to look like a finished piece whereas like if you go out to like the art store and get like or even Walmart and get like actual artist-ish pencils like they're meant to make a final piece with these arts and like I haven't really felt that that much pressure using them. I got non-photo blue and carmine red. Um, so far I'm liking the carmine red a lot better. Did this sketch for a watercolor piece I'm right now working on. There's gonna be a speed paint of that later once I finish it. And I really like the carmine red a lot. It shows up well. It's a good color. I just like the color. It's a really nice shade of red. This is the non-photo blue. Is it even it's kind of showing up? Maybe. Yeah, it's not even, um, yeah, and it's like I can barely see it on the paper. Like, the amount you're seeing on the screen is about how much I can actually see on the paper. Like, I get why it's that way. Because, you know, it's supposed to be a shade of blue that, like, scanners can't detect, which we'll see how that actually turns out. I haven't tested that yet. But it's also so faint that it's really hard to see when you're sketching, which is a problem for me because I press down really hard, like, so, um, if you can see, there's like pressure marks in the paper from me pressing down so hard so that, you know, you can act, so I could actually see what I was doing. I didn't realize until I did this piece, like, what a heavy hand I have. But I do, apparently. It's like, on these, which were thumbnails for the same picture, it's like, for like the painting I'm working on, it's like, it's like I pressed down pretty hard. So... Moral of the story is I need to be careful with the non-photo blue. I know. It, it was two dollars. You know, I'll live if I end up not using it. Maybe I'll get a brighter blue so I can feel fancy when I'm animating. Like, ah yes, I have the red pencil and the blue pencil. Like all the pros do because we need two different colors apparently. But Carmine Red, winner. I like this. Last two things. Uh, so I got these mixed media cards. It's like, uh, they're just like, you know, greeting cards, but just a blank card. I'm going to be doing art on these. I think uh, I'm right now working on hopefully having set up by January an Etsy shop so I can sell art because I, think I had an experiment my freshman year of high school, or not high school, college, where I tried to do that. Was a miserable failure, but I learned a lot. I did sell a few things. People have my art from freshman year in their houses. Or at least one person does because they bought it. I am so sorry. <gasps> but it's like... Uh, I wanted to make art to put on these cards. Um, some people might be getting those with Christmas presents. And I, I might also, so I'm going to see about selling these online. Also looking at starting to do cons to like get some learning experience and like force me to actually have deadlines for like my art that isn't school assignments. So it's like I hope to be selling those cards at definitely on Etsy and hopefully at uh, I know I'm doing the ODU Minicon and I'm looking at the Christopher Newport one and Regent Con, it, that better become a thing because I'm helping organize it. So like granted they're all like smaller college cons but I'd rather like go slowly and get my feet wet first. You know, hopefully people will buy them although since it's mostly college kids I'm not really sure how excited they are about greeting cards. Probably going to be recording some live paints with those as well. You know, we'll see what happens. 
last but not least, I'm not sure if you guys can tell, but I have a sketchbook addiction problem. One, two, three, four, five, six. Granted, one of those is a watercolor pad, but still. Oh, and seven. And now eight. Oh, nine. Ten, including the set design one that's currently sitting elsewhere. Should I have bought this $4 sketchbook? No. But it was $4. I mean, come on. Oh, did I mention I also have another sketchbook exactly like this one at home? And like two a Canson XL me mixed media pad that I also haven't finished filling up. I have a problem. But this is the uh, Reflections uh, dry media pad. It is eight and a half by 11, uh, double wire, it's got like double wire, which I haven't had for a big, I haven't had one of these for a big sketchbook for a while where like the binding actually felt nice. Like this actually feels like it's not gonna bend horrifically out of shape in the next two years. It's got a lot of pages. I actually don't know how many, but uh, it's a little thinner than I would usually, than I would usually get, but I usually get like mixed media pads just because I love doing inking on in my sketchbooks. And usually thinner paper can't handle that. This is an 80, I think this is an 80 pound paper. Uh, it feels pretty solid. I don't think it'll be able to handle like an ink wash at all, but it should be able to handle like maybe one solid layer of ink. Definitely, you know, like a multi-liner or something. And maybe you can get me to start doing finished pieces in a place other than my sketchbook. So yeah, that's it for art haul. If you're new to this channel, which you probably are, uh, I'm posting videos approximately every two weeks. Uh, usually it's I think the past two have been a speed drawing from Inktober and like a painting-ish thing that I did in Krita. So um, a lot of me doing art, talking about art, hopefully doing non-school things. Occasionally you'll be seeing that anyway and just lots of fun things. So yeah, thanks for watching.